Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com bringing you another Beat Matt Bat Rep. We work so you can play. Mini War Gaming's Beat Matt Bat Rep. Today we're going to do a Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report. Chris has challenged me to a game of 2,250 points of Warriors of Chaos against my Tomb Kings. And we're going to change it up a little bit because one thing that I haven't really been doing in my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Reports is really incorporating the terrain features that the new edition of Warhammer Fantasy came out with. And I'll, what I mean by that is the mysterious terrain as well as some of the special terrain as well. So since we received all of that really good looking terrain from dreamspiritwargaming.com, we thought this is a perfect opportunity for us to give it the special rules and make a much more interesting game. It's a bit of a challenge with fantasy because if you clutter the board too much with terrain, you can't get your movement trays around. That's a disadvantage of the movement trays, of course but it should provide both of us uh, a bit of a challenge as we try to figure out uh, a slightly different way than we're normally used to playing. And so let's take a look. We're going to look at the armies as well as the terrain features and the scenario. We'll start off by looking at my Tomb Kings. Now, if you've watched my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Reports and you're going to recognize this army because I only have about 2,500 points. So when we get up to this points level, I basically have to bring the same thing. But I've tried to do a bit of a variation. You'll see in just a second how I'm going to do that. Right here, we have a Tomb King. He's going to be joining the squad of uh, warriors, and he's been upgraded with a weapon that lets him get plus two strength and also heroic killing blow. That is a Lich High Priest, level four, and this is going to be a Tomb Herald, and he's going to be our Battle Center Bear. I've never actually used a Battle Center Bear, so that's the first I'm going to do that. And this guy's going to proxy in for a regular Lich Priest. Normally he's on a horseback, but I don't have the model and he's just on foot. We have a large group of 51 skeleton warriors with a full command. Then we have a squad of 16 archers. I have to do a bit of proxying here because my models are getting busted up. I need to repair some of them. We've got 14 just regular horseman archers. And then we've got five chariots, full command, and they're being led by an invisible tomb prince. I need to also fix that model. And then we have a, a screaming skull catapult with the upgrade, as well as a bone giant or the necroth, the colossus I think it's called now. And I'm going up against Chris's Warriors of Chaos. And this is a pretty beefy list as you're going to see throughout the game. And leading the charge is going to be his Chaos Lord on a Juggernaut. With all sorts of upgrades. It's like 380 points just for that one model. And he has two level 2 Chaos Sorcerers. Both with the lore of death. Which is the lore I absolutely hate. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Then we've got uh, Warhounds. Two groups of five of them. They're pretty cheap, but they're nice to, to use just to out maneuver everybody else. And then we've got a group of 20 Warriors of Chaos with the Mark of Nurgle and a full command. And then we've got a large group of 40 Marauders with the Mark of Corn and a full command and shields. So they're his tar pitting unit. Then we've got two groups of Marauder Horsemen, one, one with uh, flails and the other with throwing spears. And then we've got a hefty group of five Chaos Knights. These guys have like a one plus armor save. It's something ridiculous like that. And then in the back, we've got some muscle here with the three trolls and then some support with his war shrine. So you can actually pack a lot of punch into a 2,250 point list. And so that is his Warriors of Chaos. So this is a close combat army to the max. There's only a tiny bit of shooting in all of this. I want to take a look at the terrain features because I've decided, you know what, we need to use terrain more often than we do at this point. And since we've received all this cool terrain from dreamspiritwargaming.com, we decided to, to turn it into the, the magical terrain. And so I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. This piece of terrain right here is going to be the one that gives you extra channeling dice. So if there's a, a wizard on there, he gets to use up to four dice instead of one for channeling. We've got a mysterious forest here, which we'll, we'll find out later in the game what it turns out to be, as well as an obelisk there that gives plus one to channeling attempts. We've got a circle of magic here that gives magic resistance two to anybody within six inches. And then a min mini wargaming cube is going to be, I can't remember what it's called, but it basically gives plus one to wound for anybody within six inches of it. Another mysterious forest, and then another shrine, and this one, if anything is within six inches of it at the beginning of the turn, that there's a 50-50 chance that they'll take D6 strength for hits. So basically, you want to steer clear of it. And then the river is actually going to be counted as a river, and it's going to be a mysterious river as well. So there's still lots of open space for the movement trays to go around, but we wanted to add all that in. This is probably a little excessive for how much mysterious or arcane terrain we have, but I really wanted to go all out because we have this cool-looking terrain, and for the most part, 
I don't think we really utilize terrain well enough in our battle reports, and I want to change that. And that goes for both Warhammer Fantasy and 40k. War Machine, we're a little better at using it, but uh, even then we could have some more interesting elevation changes and all of that. So hopefully in the future you're going to see some new tables with new terrain so we can really start to change that up. Because I think it's not only important to have different armies being showcased, but also different setups, because the terrain features really can change the feel of the game. And that's what we want to be able to do here, is give you a variety there. So as we're setting up here, you can see my warriors are going to be right smack in the center, as I normally do with the archers, with the Lich Priest joining the archers on that one piece of terrain that gives him plus three dice to channel. Now, another thing with that, when you roll up to four dice, you get to choose. If you roll three or more sixes, he actually has to roll on the miscast table. So there's a chance that when you roll the dispel, if you roll three or more sixes, that you then will have some problems going on there. But the likelihood of that is pretty slim. I just wanted to point that out so you know the rules for it. I don't have all the names of the train right here in front of me. And he's setting up pretty much the same across from me. And uh, he basically just has this nice line of heavy hitting guys that he just wants to smash into my lines as, as effectively as possible. So I've got to somehow funnel him into a smaller choke, which you kind of see right here I have a bit of a choke. That'll force him not to be able to get everybody into combat at once, hoping to keep the chariots back a little bit so that he charges my warriors first and then I can hit him with the chariots and get the impact hits. Uh, the only problem that's going to be there is that certain of his models aren't going to be hurt too much by the impact hits, such as the Chaos Knights with their 1 plus armor save. Now, if you wonder how can somebody have a 1 plus armor save, well, if you roll a 1 for your armor save, you'll always fail it. But in Warhammer Fantasy, the strength of the weapon will actually decrease your armor save. So strength 4 weapon will give you minus 1 armor save, a strength 5 will give you minus 2, and so on and so forth. So having a 1 plus armor save means that you can take a higher strength hit without losing your armor save right away. So a strength 4 hit will change that 1 plus into a 2 plus, which is basically what a 1 plus is anyway. And then his War Shrine has the ability to give random effects, and one of them is actually a plus one armor save. So they could essentially end up with a zero plus armor save, which I'll give away something they actually end up with at one point in the game. I can say that because it doesn't really give away any of the tactics or strategies that are going to happen because of that. It's more a bit of a random effect. And so there you have our setup. Basically two close combat armies. I do have a lot of shooting. If you're wondering what the gaps are in my Warriors, it's because I'm missing a few models, and so... You know, those gaps are actually models that will fill in as the guys in the back die. And he has his marching line. And so the terrain is really going to change up the game. You can see I put my horseman archers in the back there with their scout move. Accidentally left it within 6 inches of that shrine that could do d6 strength 4 hits. So there's the setup. Stay tuned for round 1. Click on the annotation if you're on YouTube. Or click the link below for part 2 to see round 1. And I'll give something away. Something spectacularly awful happens in round 1 almost right at the beginning. So go ahead and watch that and don't forget to subscribe.